Hi, my name is Chris. I'm with the customer success team at Xano. Today, I want to show you how to search for local businesses using Xano. What does this mean? Just as an example, let's say that you want to build an app that lets people type in their zip code and find uh, local restaurants in their area. I'm going to show you how to do that, and I'm also going to show you how to take that data and store it back into your Xano database for future manipulation later, like if you wanted people to be able to rate them or leave comments or something like that. Today, I'm just going to show you how to get that data. First, I want to show you the uh, three things that we'll be using to make this happen. Obviously, number one, we'll be using Xano. Uh, we'll also be using Zipopotamus, which is a free API that allows you to uh, do some manipulation with zip codes and locations and things like that. And the third is the Places API from M3O. Uh, I wanted to show you my table here quickly, just so you can kind of see the information that we're going to be getting once this is all said and done. I have a table here. It's just called Restaurants. I'm going to go ahead and hide the Created At field because I personally don't really care about that one. We're going to grab the restaurant name, the address, and the rating. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to go right over here to my APIs. Um, I just have my default API group right now, so we will hop in there. Let's add a new API endpoint. Uh, this is just going to be a simple database operation, so we'll click the first option here. We want to modify our restaurants table, so I'm going to select that. And uh, I'm going to select Git here. It may sound like post makes more sense because post is when you're adding a record to a database, but selecting an operation here does not limit you on the type of manipulation that you can do in your function stack, which is sort of the instructions on what you want Xano to do with this data. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Git, and we will call this uh, Git Local Restaurants, and save. And now we're here. You can see we have our inputs, our basic function stack, and uh, our response. So let's walk through these here. Uh, what are the inputs that we're going to need for this? Um, really, the only input that we're going to need is uh, what is what is the area that we're searching for restaurants in. So we're going to do that by zip code. I'm going to click this plus sign right here. We're just going to make this a normal text field. You could make it an integer. That's fine. I just prefer to use text because it's more versatile, and you can still use numbers in there without an issue. So we'll hit text. I'm going to call this zip code and save. There we go. Now we have a zip code. You can see that in our function stack, it has, uh, Xano has added a default because we labeled this as a Git request. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this because I don't need it. Get rid of that there. And let's go ahead and add our first function. So our first function is going to be to make an external API request to Zipopotamus so we can take our zip code and we can turn that into latitude and longitude which we can then pass along to the Places API from M3O. So let's grab our external API request here. We're going to go over to Zipopotamus. This is all we need right here, this URL. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it right in there. It has a zip pre-filled in there. Obviously, I don't want that. So I'm going to put a percent %s here. That denotes a variable. After that, I'm going to go right down here. I'm going to click Add Filter, and this is going to let me replace that variable with our zip code. Uh, the filter that we want here is called Sprint F. You can see formats text with variable substitution. Exactly what we want. So let's click that, and our argument is, of course, going to be our zip code. Update that, and we save that. And just so I can show you what has happened so far, I'm going to head down here to my response, and I'm going to change our response to API underscore one, which, as you can see, that is what our API call is storing its data in. Let's save that, and we will run and debug this. Uh, I just need to put in a zip code here, so let's put in my zip code, 62959, and then hit run. And you can see uh, it's got our postal code here, uh, country, the place name, longitude, latitude, state, all that. Uh, so that is, uh, that's exactly what we want. And now let's see what we can do with that. Okay, so we have our API request is working fine from Zipopotamus here. Uh, before we go back and we start doing a bunch of other stuff, I'm going to have you click this copy result button right here. We're going to need that in a second. So I'm going to click that and close. And now we're going to create some variables. We need a 
latitude variable, a longitude variable, and then we need to smash those together into a single variable, which is what we need to pass along to M3O uh, to their places API. So I'm gonna go to add here. I'm gonna see data manipulation. I want variables. So I'm gonna click that. I'm going to create a variable. I'm gonna call this long. And then we're gonna go down here to value. Uh, what do we want to store in that variable? You can see right here, we have our API underscore one, which is where our Zipopotamus call is stored. Uh, and you see this right here, it says subpath. I'm gonna click on that. And that's essentially going to let us narrow down that call and pull out the exact piece of data that we need. Now this is why I had you copy the JSON result from the API call originally. We're just gonna paste that in here. And then we will click define. Xano does some magic and it can pick apart every single piece of data that we're getting in that call. So you can just drill down in these uh, little drop downs here and grab exactly what we want. So we want the longitude. So you can see I have it right here. I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna hit save. And then uh, I'm going to uh, clone this here. And then we will click back into it. And this time we want the latitude. I'm just going to uh, type in latitude right here because I know that that's what it's looking for. And I know that that's what it looks like in the JSON result. Uh, but if you want, you can go back and do the subpath again. Uh, let's click save here. Uh, so now I like to be extra careful. I'm going to go ahead and run and debug this again. It's not going to show me anything different, but I just want to make sure that we're not throwing any errors getting those variables. So we have a success here. Great. Love that. Now it is time to take both of those variables and smush them together. So let's go to add. We're going to create one more variable right there. Now, do you remember uh, a little bit ago when we used uh, percent %s? We're going to do that again. Let's give this variable a name. I'm just going to call it lat long. And by value, I'm going to put percent %s and then a comma and then percent %s. Uh, the comma is there because that's what M3O expects. It wants latitude, comma, longitude. So we'll, uh, we'll leave that as is and we'll go to add filter. We're going to use sprint f again to manipulate those variables. And then we need to add our arguments. So I'm going to add our latitude and then add our longitude and update and save. We now have our variable. We have our lat long variable and we are ready to pass that along to the places API. Okay, so now we're ready to actually build our uh, external API call to M3O. So let's hit this plus sign down here and we will click on external API request. So now we're gonna do something a little bit different than before. Uh, this time we're gonna use the import curl function. M3O is gonna give us a command that we can throw in here and Xano is gonna pick it apart for us. It's magic, you'll see it in a second, it's great. So we'll go over here to the page for the places API. This is at m3o.com forward slash place. So we have this curl command right here. I'm just gonna copy this, go back into Xano and click import curl and paste that right there and click import. Okay, so you can see here, we have our URL for the API request and then we have our parameters down here that Xano has pulled out of that uh, curl command. So we don't need this keyword one here. So I'm going to just get rid of that, click the X there. Our location, uh, you can see it has a predetermined value. I'm gonna click on this. And in the value box, I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select our lat long variable that we created earlier and hit update. Uh, and then we have a type. Now with this API, you can set uh, the type of a business that you're looking for. For this example, we're looking for restaurants. So I'm gonna type in restaurant and hit update. Now we have one more we need to update. We need to put in our API key from M3O. So I'm gonna grab that really quick. You can just get this in your account settings at M3O. And I'm gonna get rid of this, uh, this uh, dollar sign M3O API token and paste my key in there and hit update and hit save. So now if we did all that right, uh, we should be seeing our, uh, our results properly. We just have to make sure to set our response uh, our API call is being stored into API underscore two. And that's what I have already set in my response down here. So I just hit save and uh, let's run and debug this and we should see our results. 
And there we go. We have our local restaurants ready to go. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that data. We're going to clean it up a little bit. So let's go to add here and we will go to data manipulation, create variable. I'm going to call this one data we want. And for our value, we're going to need to go into the subpath of API 2 again. Uh, and I need that JSON. So I'm going to save. And I'm actually going to run and debug this. We'll copy the JSON result. Go ahead and close this. And we'll go back into our create variable. Go to value. Go to subpath of API 2. Just like before, we're going to paste our JSON result in there. And we'll click define. And let's, uh, let's nail this down a little bit here. This is the one I want right here. This is our results. And it is in array. So that has all 10 of our results in it. So I'm just going to click that and hit save. So now we have our variable with our restaurant data. And uh, let's, uh, let's get that put into the table, shall we? So let's go over here to add. Now for this, we're going to need a loop. Because we have an array with a bunch of different results inside, we're going to need to tell Xano, hey, I want you to go through each one of these and do the same thing to all of them, right? So we will go to data manipulation and we will click loops. And for this, we need a for each loop. So what I actually want to do before we proceed is I'm going to close this and I want to turn this guy off for a second. And I just want to refer back to our results real quick. I want to show you something. Uh, so you can see here in the results array, the name, the address, and the rating. It's going to be important to remember how those are labeled in the result because we're going to have to reference those here in a second. So let me go ahead and turn on my loop here. And we will go ahead. Let's go ahead and add the function. So I want to add a database request, add a record to our restaurants table. Now, I'm going to show you something super cool here. If you remember a second ago when I had you look back at the JSON result and remember what those uh, little pieces of the result were called, how the name and the address and the rating was actually labeled. If you wanted to, because our loop is storing those results one at a time under item, I could click item here and I could type item.name. And then we would be good to go, right? But let me show you some Xano magic here. This little magic wand right here, if I click this, it says choose value to apply to inputs, and I go down to item. You can see it is populating what our item is uh, actually being populated with, which is great. So, uh, so for this one right here, for our created at, we don't have anything for that. So I'm going to click this little X right here, and I'm just going to leave that one alone. We don't even really need it. You can see that Xano has pre-populated the fields that match. So we have name and name, address and address, rating and then rating. So all I have to do now is click save. And we should be done. Everybody cross your fingers and click this run button for me. We have a success, but we don't actually know if it's a success yet. We have to go back into our table and make sure that the data is actually there. So let's go over here to database, click restaurants. Look at that. You did it. Give yourself a round of applause. Now we have our list of restaurants here and you can continue to do whatever you want with this data. Hopefully this helps and I will, uh, I'll catch you in the next one.